week, Jeff Grubb uh, got himself in a bit of hot water, so to speak, where, you know, he's done this before. Uh, and again, you know, your again, your miles may vary based on on Jeff's opinions and some of his reporting. I like Jeff a lot. I really do. I think he's a he's a fine journalist. I like what he does with Giant Bomb. I like him even better when he teams up with Mike to do Nintendogs. He's 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 a fun guy to be to, to to hang out with. I've never hung out with him. Hopefully that will change this June. Uh, Jeff, if you're listening, I don't know if you are, but uh, you know, I'd like to meet you in real person. Kind of have a Dr Pepper. Uh, would be kind of cool. I'm going to be in L.A. for the whole festivities. Hopefully you'll be there as well. Well, I have on cue uh, what he his rebuttal was because he reported that according to folks that he spoke to within from that were familiar with the production and development of perfect dark and that it wasn't doing so well. Now, I don't know what made him go looking further for more information. Well, we have two videos here. Uh, shout out to dirt Griggity who actually did this. And again, who doesn't love dirt He's a phenomenal guy and has one of my favorite, my absolute all time favorite seg- uh, segments inside of podcasting. And that is the POS of the week. I love it because he does put people on blast and you know, it may not be your humor, but it's, it's mine. I like when you know, and he doesn't put un- any undeserving people there. If you make his list, you did something heinously and he lets you know about yourself. So shout out to dirt. Love that guy. Love the work he's doing in the community. But let me do a screen share uh, so you guys and gals can uh, check out what I am putting down here regarding uh, the video. And I do have it full screen. So this is the first video of Jeff Grubb talking about Perfect Dark. Perfect Dark. Get right into it. Okay, so I'm going to rewind. Jeff Grubb, here we go. Let's do this. Uh, yeah, Hello, yeah, I, I want to give you an update on Perfect Dark and the Summer Game Mess. Let's uh, start with Perfect Dark. Get right into it. Um, earlier this week on the Bombcast, I mentioned that I had heard from a couple of people that it was in rough shape. Uh, I've, you know, I've heard that for a while on the corporate side. Heard from the development side. Uh, something that seemed to line up with everything I'd heard before. And I think this is one of those situations that, you know, as I said at the time. Um, Game development is messy and complicated, and these things can come together, you know, at, at any point during development. And throughout that time, different people can have different perspectives on how the game is going. Um, and I, you know, some people definitely think, hey, there's things that don't look great and are, are in rough shape. But just as many, if not more, uh, now that I've had the chance to talk to even more people, think it looks really good and think it's coming together. Uh, and yeah, the expectation is that it should be in that showcase next month. Now I'm not guaranteeing that, but that's, that's the way the wind is blowing. Uh, if things, if things, uh, change, I wouldn't be, you know, 1 million percent surprised. Uh, that's only because, uh, we're a month out still. These things are actually still a conversation. They're in flux. Uh, I bet they have a pretty good idea of what will be in the show, but how it actually presents in the show, whether it's, um, uh, includes like all the the information like here's a release date that stuff still is definitely a conversation and then some things are still like on the bubble about whether they'll be in there or not uh, we've definitely seen that in the past um well i'll get to one of those jeff Grubb. so okay so what i'm going to do is i i have another uh uh um part of the video uh let me just bring that up over here let me just here, uh, here in a second. Uh, he's gonna it's 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 44 seconds or actually it's a minute uh one 101. Uh, so let me just uh, bring the full screen for you folks. Uh, this is the second part of what he was just talking about. Uh, it's two parts put together. So please uh, take a look and listen. Those here, here in a second. But really, the bottom line with Perfect Dark is the game is it not some special case where it's falling apart. I never said development hell. I never said it wouldn't be in the showcase. I just said I heard from a couple of people that they think it looks rough. That's still the case. It's just that situation where for some people they are uh, really bashing their head against that because it's a big game and it has a lot of issues just like any big game. And there's a lot of people who are like, no, we have figured out most of those problems. And yeah, there are a few ahead of us, but we're, we're not worried about it. It's just a complicated thing. These things take time, take a lot of money, take a lot of people. And that's definitely the case for perfect dark, but it's not in some 
really bad scenario that's going to prevent it from delivering the way that they need it to necessarily. Uh, but, you know, don't take my word for it. It seems like we're going to be able to judge for ourselves here relatively soon. Uh, and then do we get a release date? No idea. No idea about any of the details that might be in there. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, let me just, uh, uh, you know what? Look, Fuzzy, let's go right to you. Uh, this is a big first-party game. Uh, it's even bigger because you have someone talented like Crystal Dynamics working on this. Uh, this is a game that has been in development minimum since 2020. Uh, they did obviously have uh, some storyboarding and things in 2019 because obviously they showed us a CG trailer in 2020. Um, and, uh, again, you know, Jeff or who he knows, he knows a lot of people. He has a lot of connections. I'm glad he did in fact, clarify some of the statements prior, because like I said, people, uh, you know, called him to the carpet, so to speak about, you know, about it being in shambles, uh, not being ready. Uh, and again, obviously it's not releasing this year. I don't even know if it's releasing next year, but I will say this, uh, fuzzy at this point. Uh, seeing, and I would hope, learning uh, their lessons from Redfall when you have as many games coming out as they do this year. Uh, next year, obviously, potentially, you got Forza Horizon 6, you got Gears, you might have a, a Halo, right? You remember, all these things are potentially around the corner. You might have a Fable next year. There is absolutely zero rush to put out a game that is going to have issues by all means, take all the time you need crystal dynamics and just get the game to a way to, to, a, to a place where it is a next gen experience, which is we're hoping for. Obviously I have not heard what Jeff heard because I don't have connections like him, but it's a good chance that it's going to show up at the showcase. Let's talk about it. Well, I, I just want to backtrack on the initiative and what was to be expected from them and some of the things that you could kind of see writing on the wall and doing. We'll, we'll fast forward to Perfect Dark, like the initiative, the, the actual name itself means they're the ones that get stuff started. Right. And I kind of thought it was an interesting concept. Uh, they didn't really go into detail what the studio was going to be doing, but I knew when they were hiring all that top tier talent that egos might wind up getting in the way in some cases and you're going to have too many cooks in the kitchen kind of thing. And, I, and yeah, some of the talent left. Um, they'll say, you know, for whatever reason, it was like not seeing the, or agreeing on vision, but it, it's kind of to be expected. You, if you have that many uh, talented people in under one roof and, you know, somebody that may not have normally been their boss in the past is now their boss and they are usually the boss. It's, it, it could you know lead to rough edges, but the initiative name means they're going to get things started. Well, then the whole thing with Crystal Dynamics came up and it was like, oh, it must be in trouble because they're handing it off to another studio. But it's like, well, the name is initiative. They got it started. So now they hand it off and they could go back and start another project to hand off to somebody. Or at least that's how I kind of thought it would be. But all of that being said, uh, Crystal Dynamics has had its own issues being acquired by uh, Embracer after Square said they were no longer of use to them kind of thing, sold them dirt cheap, Embracer grabbed them, and then Embracer realized that they had a handshake deal that couldn't uh, afford to keep them kind of thing. Um, but they're still hanging on to them. Microsoft came in to kind of save the day, use them as a, a uh, you know support studio right now for this this uh, IP. But they've their track record as far as Tomb Raider stuff, uh, with the exception of the the you know the blemish on their record with um, uh, what was that uh, the game the Marvel game that they did uh, Marvel Avengers, which was out of their wheelhouse normally, they've been doing pretty good work as far as what they've you know been doing for probably the past ten years. So them working on Perfect Dark, I don't think was ever going to really be a, a big problem, but there were probably going to be some things that they would have to get accustomed to depending on the engine they're using because. I'm not, I'm under the impression they're not using uh, Unreal Engine 5. I could be wrong on that. But normally when uh, a Microsoft studio is using Unreal, it's plastered everywhere as far yeah. as them making mention of it. So with it being an engine that maybe, you know, Crystal Dynamics isn't familiar with or as familiar with, 
there's there's going to be a, a bit of a learning curve, some some stuff to kind of get used to and then get the ball going. Now, early on, I heard, yeah, things are a little rough, but that's typically the case in the beginning. But I've heard from some people on the inside, and it's not the greatest of connections, but like they've been hearing of play tests or involved in play tests and things are moving forward. And even Drew Murray had like a playable version before he decided to go back to Insomniac. But uh, yeah, it games now take a, a good bit of time. I'm, I'm glad that, you know, Jeff Grubb is now based his, his uh, you know, speaking on talking to a lot more people probably at either the studio or involved with the studio or somewhere within the mix or within the reach of that title. Like I said, there's internal testing going on. We've heard in the past that there were internal reviews for things like uh, Redfall, which whatever group did that internal review, I'm pretty sure they're not using them anymore uh, because of the disparity between what was the actual and what they they thought it was. But I'm, I'm pretty sure Redfall was a learning experience going forward and anything moving forward, especially considering even things like State of Decay, they've they've kept things quiet, kept things as far as to the public in the dark for the most part to kind of keep their head down and keep them at, you know, keep them working through whatever they may have come across as far as a pipeline issue or something along those lines. But all in all, it's better to, if you're, if you're going to make a statement about, you know, the condition of a game, it's better to get more than just one person saying, oh yeah, it's in a rough state because they may not have checked on it in several months or they may not have checked all it, on it all week or, or all year, I should say, or maybe the part that they saw, which could have been something relating to the menus, or maybe it was, you know, something engine related that they were trying to condense or, or work through. And that's all the only thing that that person saw. Meanwhile, everything else, as far as the, the biomes and all that stuff, or, you know, character models and all the coding, as far as the, the scripts for the, the actions and quest lines and things like that, all of that could have been fine, but that person wouldn't necessarily know. So it's good that Jeff has, I guess, spoke to more people and, you know, whether it's because he got pushed back from it or whether it's just a matter of, yeah, more people came to him and was like, dude, what the hell are you talking about? Like, it hasn't been like, there hasn't been a, a, a major issue in like two years now. Everything is ro rolling smoothly. We're meeting milestones. We, we're getting that vertical slice ready for the showcase kind of thing. And I'm pretty sure he's like, oh crap, I, I kind of put my foot in my mouth kind of thing. But sometimes he gets stuff right. Sometimes he gets outdated info. Sometimes he gets stuff right. And it's just not the complete picture kind of thing. But whatever yeah. the case may be, I do expect this at the showcase. We'll see what it looks like at the showcase. If it wasn't showing up at the showcase or doesn't show up at, let's say, the Game Awards later this year, then that's when you might want to say, hmm, still kind of haven't seen anything in a while. But if we see it at one of those two events, I would say that should put at least initial concerns or worries at rest. And then when we see it at the showcase, if they give us a date or a window, that will tell us how much longer they have to, you know, polish things up and things along those lines. But I, I, like I said, showcase, I expect it there. Um, hopefully some people will not have all of their eggs in a basket on a particular vantage point. I know some people prefer first person. I know some people prefer third person. I'm not going to say which one it is, but for the most part, uh, they have talked about that in previous interviews and it'll be, it'll, it'll line up exactly with that. So um, just be prepared for something that'll probably blow your mind uh, as far as not necessarily stealth genre altogether, but something where it's a spy game and there's going to be a lot of action and gadgets. Yeah, I, I think this is going to blow some people's socks off. So look forward to it next month. Yeah, me too. Uh, Crispy Bomb, actually, I have it on confirmation from two sources. One, uh, One Bed Mother says that it is, in fact, uh, Unreal Engine 5. And I got the exact quote, what, what happened. Yep. Uh, in 2022, after the initiative partnered with Crystal Dynamics, development restarted under Unreal Engine 5. And it was a, it was more productive for the team. Uh, so Crystal Dynamics familiar with, with with it. Obviously, it's one of those situations where uh, Crispy, we don't know. Listen, if you know anything about uh, Perfect Dark, it is spy, a spy, a spy type game. It does have futuristic uh, gadgets in there, which is what Fuzzy just said. Uh, it is a good chance that is uh, it is going to be 
Uh, first of all, uh, shout out to Drone Dude FP, uh, FPV. He says, "Who the, who for who will this game be?" I think it's just a bad spreadsheet, uh, a bad spreadsheet conclusion, like most Microsoft ideas. I disagree, brother, and I'm gonna tell you why. Uh, can anyone raise their hand and tell me when we had a, a, a Splinter Cell type of game? Uh, well, shit, it's been years. Uh, almost, a, I, I think last gen, the gen before the last one. Uh, you know, yeah. we haven't had a good spy game. Uh, Perfect Dark, Hitman. Joanna Dark. <clears throat> Hitman might be that, right? Yeah, I mean, Hitman is is. I guess you can consider that. That that's definitely a spy one. But yeah. for me personally, I think I think this does like for a game. It's an old IP, something I want to see Microsoft return to. I want to see an old uh, bring some back old IPs. Uh, Nintendo does it to great success. Perfect Dark is and was successful. Uh, it could be great on two fronts. Uh, Crispy Bomb, both multiplayer, which is right up your alley. Single player, right up my alley. Uh, and obviously for a female demographic that doesn't have a whole lot of female lead characters, I think this is freaking great because Tomb Raider has been around in a long time and we don't know when the next one's going to come out. I think this does, you know, depending on you consider check boxes or not, it's the, it's the kind of game that I want to play. And I think that if it's as graphically as uh, impressive as Fuzzy Belvedere is claiming, then it is going to be a showpiece. And uh, what are your takes on uh, Jeff kind of walking back what he said about the game being not in such great shape? I think he said that because we all originally saw the the original trailer for the new Perfect Dark, and it was in first person, yes. correct? Yes, it was. So, yeah. And, and this is where I – so I looked it up real quick as we were talking about it. So. This is from the Unreal Engine YouTube channel. It says Crystal Dynamic taking the heroic leap from a proprietary, which was the Gax engine, Ooh. which is Gax, like the, the Gecko, remember, yes. yeah. back mm -hmm. in the day? Apparently, that engine's been used for, like, Tomb Raiders and stuff. Interesting. But to UE5, Unreal Fest, 2022 okay so do they so the reason why he heard this in previous times and then he walked it back pretty quickly for jeff grubb i mean i'm just saying he walked it back pretty darn quick and i say did they switch perspective because at the end of the day like initiative was doing their own thing could they have possibly been using slip space remember sl slip space was like 500 million dollars yeah to, to develop into an engine correct so maybe they were using slip space and then they needed help because people left and and people wanted to do their own thing they they, they maybe I mean, I, I'm a worker and I, I know how to do my own thing maybe they're like you know I I I can make a really good third person game, but I can't make a really good first person game. You know what I mean? And, and maybe they have pivoted throughout this period of time. And, you know, and this is where I say, like, if it does show up in June, I feel like if it's well received by, you know, whatever metrics they look at, and and most people say, hey, like this going to third person is way better. I think that will be because Crystal D is so cheap and Embracer is just like, we need to sell. We're we're dividing our, our industry, you know, our our we're segregating what we have already, and then we're trying to divide it within like triple a double a and et cetera and and even mobile in some aspects and and we're doing this for a reason but at the same time like microsoft is paying them to have crystal dynamics work on said game if this is well received it's within the threshold they would probably sell at the same price that they bought from Square 
just to break even on it. And here you go. It's it's regulators can't do nothing about it, by the way. No, so not, I mean, not I, that small. Yeah. Not, yeah. Not so that. they have like, you know, this could be an opportunity to refocus. Like, like it looked good. Like when I, you know, but you know, me, I'm a third, like I, I like third person. You know what I mean? And and a lot of people do, like clearly. But there are like multiplayer elements to Perfect Dark. There are a lot of things that you can do with it that brings the the downsides to whatever. You know, like you have to you have all the tools like with all these other studios that have done it, but at the same time, like do they want to do it? And I feel like him walking it back was actually like, okay, there's something else there and we're not going to find out because he can't say type right. thing. You know what I mean? Cause like, it, it's, it's just a little weird how quickly he did it. And, and you know, like to do a recent cast and say what he said and then go back on it almost like, Oh, okay. I found out that it's 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 actually better because people are so passionate about what they've done that he had somebody reach out to him and it was like, "Nah, bro, you're you're off on this." You know what I mean? Like, remember what I told you earlier, type thing. And then he was like, "Oh yeah, you know, maybe you know, I had both sides of it coming there. So maybe it it really has to do with perspective because gaming. I mean." It, it comes down to perspective. Like, that's why I love Bethesda games. I can go either or. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's why I love them so much. Like, it, it's so it's so intriguing to be able to just click a button and just bang, I'm in first person, bang, I'm in third person. You know what I mean? Like, even yeah. if it's in the heat of battle, it's it's actually super, like, intriguing. And, like, it gives me, like, the sense of control that is so incredible. And that's why I hope one day we get to, like, a lot of games doing both. Because I think it, it will, like, really reinvigorate the entire, like, gaming aspect. So I look at this and I say, could it be that? Could it be just them going to UE5, which is logical within Microsoft at this point? I mean, it, it, hey, Coalition, we need a couple guys. Okay, come on over. You know, you're getting paid anyway. Like, we need some help. You know what I mean? Like, it, that's it, that's something that is possible at this point. You know what I mean? And I think UE5, it, like, Unreal is, I think, looking to Xbox because we haven't seen enough from it. We haven't. We haven't seen what it's truly came like everybody's like it points out this like the matrix demo or points out that you know what i mean but we really haven't seen a game truly envelop the tools that ue5 has and i think we're going to see that with hellblade 2 very soon so I, I mean i think i think it's a logical step and and hopefully it is third person because i think i would be more intrigued to play it that's the way i look at it yeah, well, we're gonna we're gonna know soon enough. I I really do think it's gonna be at the show. Uh, I got some information that I'm not uh, really allowed to divulge that uh, tells me that it's gonna be there. Uh, what that I, I'm not gonna again not get into the particulars, but I have a really good feeling it's gonna be there. Uh, Hargeet, again, this showcase we're gonna be there. Uh, we're gonna be in LA. I am dying to see what is not only going to be on the xbox stage obviously ign live is going to have uh some reveals don't know what those are uh jeff obviously is going to have some pretty big ones will be in the audience for that i'm looking forward to that uh what are your thoughts on the 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 walking back of the game not being in the greatest of shapes from jeff because it was pretty it was like crispy was saying it was pretty quick where he did it you know said hey what he said on his podcast and then obviously, I, I think it was, I don't know if it was the same day or it was the day after, but it was pretty quick that he was like, hey, hold on. Let me just record this. This is what happened. Uh, are, are, what, are your, what are your expectations for, for Perfect Dark? Well, I'm hoping it'll it'll do fine. And like, there was a question about um, who's asking for this. Ultimately, you don't need to ask for something. People want to create a game, they create a game, right? <clears throat> just like anything else in, in art. It's they want to create something, they create it. <clears throat> but as far as like, the Jeff thing, like any of these rumors, you got to take it as a rumor, right? I heard 
that this might be happening. That may be from one perspective, right? So let's say you're the lead developer and you see that all the stuff that you need to do is good. We're good. It's all cool. Say you're a QA person. You're like, oh my God, there's 6,000 bugs. This is never going to get fixed. Totally different perspective. Same game, right? It just depends on who you talk to. <laughs> Hang on. So it could have just been that. He talked to one person and they said, oh my God, we'll never finish this game. It's going to take 20 years. <laughs> and you talk to somebody who's like a art developer or maybe a, a lead writer or something like that. And they're like, no, we're hitting our targets. Everything's good. <clears throat> Just depends on who you're talking to, right? You got to take all these things as what they are rumors. They're not, you know, like things can really coalesce right at the end. <clears throat> or sometimes they don't. <clears throat> and they ship whatever they can. Take Starfield. Was it really finished? It was finished enough. And then. Microsoft came in and said, it's not finished. It's just not finished. We're going to take the hit. We're going to push this out a year and you, you fix it up. It still wasn't really finished, but they still, they put it out. Right. So you never know, right? It just depends on who you talk to, right? If you had talked to Todd, he was happy to release it in 11, 11, 21. Was it 21? 22, whatever 22. it was. 22. 22. Right. Yeah. 11, 11, 22. And and Xbox Phil came in and said, "Nah, bro, this ain't ready. <laughs> Not fam. <Step> no, no, no. <laughs> take your time and fix it. I, I don't care. I'm gonna take the hit. Um, so, you know, that's just the way it is. You you, you ask you know Bonnie about uh, you know or what was it Jason Lee? Was that the guy who was running? I, I can't remember. Chris Lee. I, don't, I remember the name of the guy. Something like that. Who was running? Uh, Halo Infinite, right? Jason Jones, and, I think it was. Was it Jason what, Jones? Yeah. We're, we're, yeah, I can't remember the name of the guy, but the, the guy that was running it first, and then they moved over to, to uh, Staten, right? But uh, he was saying, oh, we'll be ready for 2020. No problem. We'll, we'll have it ready for release. And it's like, um, dude, like, what, what, are you, what are you talking about? This isn't ready at all. Uh, <laughs> and so so then they had to push that out, right? Uh, it just, again, it just depends on who you're talking to. So uh, I, I'll just take it as that uh, until they release the game and give it to me. I don't know what state it's in. Um, you know, all sorts of art forms. Look, I just wrote a book, right? And I could say, "Oh, look, I'm you mean this done. book right like, here that I purchased that you yeah, can it, purchase it, too?" Oh, we'll get to, we'll we'll get to that, folks. I, I I'm an old <laughs> man. I like the physical copy. It's in my hand, right? But but going through that process, it like, okay, I think I'm done, and then I read it and I'm like, no, I'm not done. <laughs> and I go through and like do some editing, and I'm like, I didn't even explain why you're here, so I have to go for rewrite. <laughs> so like, so like there's things like that happen right and so you just have and just think that that's one little stupid story uh, this is a huge game with all sorts of systems and so things happen while you're in the middle of the development and you never know one day you're like this is all great everything's awesome and the next day you're like oh my god we just found this massive hole i don't know what the hell we're gonna do about it uh, the the world is ending right it just depends on what kind of person you are right some people see glass half full some people see glass half empty you know like, like it is what it is right so Again, he didn't report this as it's in print. This is what's happening. Right. It's just a I'm on a podcast, just like with uh, with Jazz, right? I'm talking like just me as a human being. I, I I think I'm seeing this kind of thing, right? I'm hearing these kind of scuttlebutts. That is not like absolute, right? <laughs> and we always have to take these things with a grain of salt. Unfortunately, the media world we're living in, like. Jeff Grubb's almost always right. That must be totally accurate. Let's just write an article. It's the end of the world. Perfect Dark's not going to come out. It's it's again. It's Xbox tax here. We have to we have to say something bad. It's, it's Microsoft. We have to, <laughs> slow down, slow down. <laughs> it, it's not the end of the world. Okay, right? Like they they know D Daryl Gallagher knows how to make a game. He's put out awesome games in the past. Like slow down. <laughs> Let's let this go through, right? And we'll get the game and then we'll find out, right? Yeah.